Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Bartłomiej Wojnarkiewicz and uh, I'm software engineer in Samsung R&D Institute Poland. And uh, today I would like to tell you about uh, mm, memory management uh, done efficiently on mobile devices. So let's start. Okay. Okay, uh, so what issues with memory management uh, do we have on mobile systems? Uh, we have limited memory resources, no physical swap, uh, need for custom out of memory handling because uh, uh, for users from applications are more important uh, than the other ones and the kernel doesn't know about it. And uh, we also have a uh, requirement for custom use for some, we have uh, some custom user space requirements. Uh, and this, this is uh, connected with uh, custom auto memory handling because we would prefer to do our uh, auto memory handling in user space where we have more uh, data about uh, processes and about uh, platform uh, requirements. And uh, also, uh, generally, we would like to do some. Uh, we would like to have some pieces of uh, memory management policies in user space because it's more flexible and uh, our uh, system platform software can do a better decisions than the kernel alone. And uh, let's see what are the solutions for our problems. Uh, they are uh, control groups, memory controller, uh, memory pressure C group notifier, which is now a part of control groups memory controller, but it's quite a new feature, so uh, I will describe it uh, alone. Uh, there, there is per process and per C group uh, reclaim functionality, uh, transparent memory compression, custom auto memory handling, uh, memory volatile ranges, and uh, kernel sampage merging feature. Mm, some of these uh, Solutions are uh, kernel features, kernel only features like uh, transparent memory compression. Some are kernel features which expose uh, some APIs to user space and uh, user space applications uh, can influence memory management like memory volatile ranges or kernel, kernel same page merging. And some are user space only solutions like uh, user space uh, or home handling. Okay, let's go through, through these solutions. So, uh, control groups memory controller. Uh, who of you have heard about uh, control groups? Please raise a hand. Okay, so uh, I will uh, describe it quickly. And I think that uh, yesterday there was a session about uh, control groups, but uh, in server environments. So it's not only useful in server environments, it's also useful in mobile systems. So control groups feature uh, provides us a mechanism for aggregating, partitioning sets of, of tasks, and all the feature change children into hierarchical groups with specialist behavior. Uh, what does it mean, actually? Uh, we have a control group, which is basically a set of tasks. We have a subsystem, which is usually a resource controller. And it is a module that makes uh, it possible to work, uh, to make some operations on, uh, on these control groups. And we have a control groups hierarchy, which is a set of control groups arranged in the tree in such a way that every task in a system is assigned to uh, one particular C group. And uh, control groups can be controlled using uh, virtu con control groups uh, virtual file system, and it's quite uh, uh, easy to do. Uh, so we have uh, different uh, controllers for control groups, and one of these uh, controllers is a, a C group memory controller mem called memcg, and it uh, isolates the memory behavior of a group of tasks from the rest of the system. And uh, let's see what features it has. So it can uh, account and limit usage of anonymous, and, uh, anonymous uh, pages and file caches. Uh, 
let me explain quickly what are anonymous pages because uh, maybe not all people are so advanced in memory management. So anonymous page pages are uh, pages which are not backed by uh, files. So they are uh, also called pre private pages of a process. And uh, control group memory controller uh, does accounting and marketing of both types of, of uh, pages. Uh, we can have optionally accounting and limiting of uh, swap and kernel memory uh, pages. And uh, currently, kernel memory usage accounting uh, includes uh, stack pages, flap pages, uh, socket memory pressure, and uh, TCP memory pressure. Uh, and it's still a uh, work in progress, so maybe some more uh, kernel. Uh, memory usage will be accounted. Uh, another feature of uh, control groups memory control is, is that it does uh, hierarchical accounting and uh, reclaim. So it operates on this uh, C group hierarchy described before. And uh, it can move charts at task migration from one C group to other C group. So if we have some set of C groups, that have set some uh, that we have uh, set some limit for. Uh, we can move some tasks from one C group to other one, and uh, our usage, our uh, memory usage counter will decrease in one C group and increase in the other one. So we can have uh, multiple C groups and multiple limits. And uh, we have uh, also soft limits. Uh, because uh, normal usage uh, memory limits are, car are uh, called hard limits, and when a uh, set of uh, tasks um, exhaust the, the, their limit, uh, new processes will be killed because there will be not enough memory. But we have something like soft limits, which are usually set uh, below hard limits. And uh, in case of memory pressure or running low on memory, the uh, system will try to reclaim uh, as much as possible from this uh, C group to decrease the memory usage to be uh, closer to, to the soft limit. Uh, and uh, what, is, what is reclaim is uh, just trying to free uh, some, uh, some uh, caches or uh, trying to put uh, pages to swap. Uh, another important feature of um, MCG is uh, user usage threshold notifier. So it's possible to register mul multiple memory thresholds and uh, get notifications in the user space when they are crossed. Uh, we have uh, also this new feature, memory pressure notifier, which is similar, but instead of uh, getting notifications on crossing the limits, we get notifications when the memory pressure is uh, increasing. I will describe it uh, more in the next slide. And uh, another important feature of MCG is uh, possibility to disable in kernel out of memory handler and use uh, user space uh, out of memory notifications and uh, do uh, OOM handling in the user space. So let's go further. Mm, we have this memory pressure C group notifier feature. Uh, it was introduced in kernel 3.10, so it's quite new. And it allows applications to receive notifications where the specific uh, C group is running low on memory. Uh, even, and it is uh, possible uh, even if the whole system is not uh, under memory pressure. So we have uh, three such uh, levels of memory pressure defined. Uh, there are low, medium, and OOM. And low means that uh, memory reclaim is happening on, on low level. Application practically doesn't need to do anything. Uh, medium level means that uh, some swapping is, ha is happening in the system, and application is recommended to free uh, not important data. 
and ohm level, which means that uh, memory pressure is quite uh, high and applications should really free whatever it's possible. And uh, it's a very nice uh, feature. Later I will tell how, how we are using it. And uh, the other interesting feature is a shrinker interface to control user space behavior. Uh, it was a part of uh, m this memory pressure uh, patches, but it wasn't merged, and uh, it's still work in progress, and uh, it would be nice to have it. Uh, so I describe how it works. Uh, it operates on concept of uh, chunks of uh, application-defined size, for example, one megabyte, and uh, application passes such chunk size to kernel, and then registers for uh, notifications. Uh, occasionally, application uh, writes uh, to shrinker file a number of chunks that it allocated in user space. It can also write a uh, negative uh, number, which means that uh, chunks were freed. And uh, kernel keeps the counter of uh, application used uh, memory. And when it uh, comes time that there is a memory pressure in the system, the kernel can uh, notify application to free some, some number of chunks. And ap application then should free the number requested or uh, re-add the, the number to in form of ne ne negative number. Uh, it should uh, pass, uh, pass it to, to kernel that, that's uh, informing it that it can't uh, free this memory. Uh, so in this way, it's possible uh, to notify kernel about uh, some application caches that application can free when it's uh, a low memory when there is a low memory situation in the system uh, unfortunately there aren't any real applications which were convert to this interface so uh, I can give you any more specific examples it's still work in progress but it's uh, quite promising. Uh, another feature which uh, was uh, proposed quite recently because in March 2013 uh, is a per process reclaim and uh, it allows user space to reclaim any target process uh, anytime. And it is important uh, to reclaim uh, memory bef before we can avoid killing the process if we reclaim memory first. And uh, developer of this feature was inspired to do it when he was playing uh, on his mobile and he suddenly got a phone call and his uh, game was killed, game uh, application was killed and he lost his best score and he was very unhappy with this fact so he uh, decided to write, write this feature. And uh, it is uh, quite a simple feature. It just adds uh, a new entry in PROS file system. Uh, each uh, PID, uh, process ID, under each process ID directory, you can, uh, you can find this uh, file. And writing uh, corresponding uh, values to these uh, strings uh, to this uh, file causes reclaim of file uh, backed pages or reclaim of anonymous pages or reclaim of both types. Uh, there is also uh, per address space reclaim possible, which can be useful for, for some applications like WebKit, when you can specify an address and uh, size in bytes and uh, the, the kernel will try to reclaim the memory at this address and of this length. And uh, there is good chance that this feature will be merged in some future kernels. Currently, at, uh, currently the patches are at uh, version 5. And uh, we have similar feature, uh, per C group reclaim. So we can do uh, re reclaim per con control group. Uh, it adds uh, memory for reclaim attribute. And... Uh, uh, user space can write number of pages that it would like to free from the C group to this file 
and kernel tries to free the number of pages and it can reclaim more or fail. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this feature is currently knocked and uh, it is possible to obtain similar function functionality by other means, but they both uh, have some uh, drawbacks. In case of using uh, soft limits instead of uh, this feature, uh, we must wait for a, a gr global reclaim event and in case of uh, moving tasks between C groups, we must know the exact number of pages that uh, we would like to free. So currently this feature is not, but maybe something similar will, uh, will show in the future because it is also quite useful. And uh, this feature was quite useful for us in, in our uh, TIS and memory handler, but I will talk, talk about it later. Uh, so memory compression. Uh, I will just go over this uh, briefly because uh, yesterday Seth Jennings had a presentation about uh, transparent memory compression and uh, he already covered the subject. So we can have uh, swap anonymous pages compression uh, done in two ways. One is uh, do using front swap kernel hooks and the other one is using block device layer. And if you are using uh, front swap functionality, we must have a physical uh, swap device, which is a, a real problem on mm, most mobile devices. So there are some patches which uh, change this behavior, but they are not uh, merged yet officially. Uh, it has also some uh, advantages over the using the block layer that we can uh, reject poorly compressible pages and send them to real swap. So uh, using the front swap interface, we can check if the page is, uh, is uh, compressible to some good ratio. And if it's not, there is no sense in comp compressing it. We just uh, should send it to, to read swap and not uh, bother with consuming CPU time on uh, handling the compression for it. So we have also this uh, ZRAM uh, feature using block device layer. And it requires some user space configuration, but it can act like a normal swap disk. Uh, OK. And uh, we have also clean page uh, cache pages compression. And uh, they are using uh, clean cache kernel hooks. And they act as a caching layer for clean page cache pages. So when we have pages in uh, page cache and they are no longer used, instead of uh, evicting them from the memory forever, we try to compress them and keep them uh, in case that they, they are uh, needed in, in, in the future. And, uh, we have uh, two different memory allocators used for compressed pages. We have ZBot and uh, ZSMalloc. And uh, ZBot uh, allows no more than two pages, two compressed pages in one physical page frame. Uh, this has a bad side that uh, the maximum compression rate is 50% per percent because we can only fit two pages, uh, two compressed pages in, in, in a physical page frame. But uh, fragmentation of pages is limited and eviction of pages is also easy. And uh, Zeta small allocator offers uh, us high density but it suffers from fragmentation and uh, pages evaluation is more difficult. Mm, so the situation is that uh, ZBot is now merged in, T in 3.11 kernel and it is used by ZSwap, which is also in, in my like, uh, 3.11 kernel and ZSmalloc is uh, still in staging. And uh, we had done some uh, real-life tests of uh, swap compression using TZN applications. 
we have done it on ARM Exynos platform using uh, previously mentioned uh, per process reclaim, just requesting the reclaim of anonymous pages, and they were sent to swap. So the compression rate was about 50% for solutions tested, and it took, uh, okay, Oh, this is a very good question, and we've done some measurements on it. And uh, I don't have with me these measurements, but uh, I can ping you back on, on, on this. We, we've done some, some measurements about, about this. And uh, we also tried LV4 compression algorithm, which is new in kernel T311, and it is uh, about 10% uh, faster than uh, the, the, the default L0 uh, algorithm, and uh, the compression rate is almost unchanged. So if you are doing uh, memory compression, it's worth to use this uh, L0 uh, algorithm instead of the default uh, L0 one. Okay, and uh, what's the status of the memory compression solutions? ZSwap is merged. Zcash, uh, the third version, which contains only clean cache support, was proposed for mainline in August. And uh, Z ZRAM is uh, still in staging, but there, there are some efforts to mainline it. Okay. And uh, another uh, feature of uh, efficient memory uh, handling is uh, user space low memory killer daemon, uh, which was written some time ago. In, it was announced uh, over a year, a year ago. And uh, unfortunately, uh, it hasn't seen much development. And uh, different companies are trying to do their own di different uh, out of memory handling. And uh, it is quite uh, good uh, that it uh, exists uh, entirely in the user space. It has no kernel uh, parts. It just uses some functionality to get uh, low memory notifications from the kernel. And it can be from C groups or from uh, VM event functionality, which was uh, ancestor to mem pressure C group notification. And uh, this a user space demo is not converted to use this final version of this main pressure, main pressure C group, unfortunately. Uh, but you can use C, C groups to pass uh, notifications to it. And uh, it acts as a drop in replacement for kernel Android low memory killer driver. So it is uh, quite, quite nice uh, feature. Mm, and uh, uh, when it comes to uh, vendor solutions, we also uh, have one. Um, but we are trying to go from uh, mixed kernel user space solution to uh, the only user space solution. Uh, what's interesting in our solution is that uh, processes are divided into two groups. You have foreground and background processes. So on actual user, user interface, you can uh, do distinction between processes uh, on the, the ones that users see and the ones that user uh, don't see. And uh, when, it, uh, when there is a, a memory pressure situation, you are just killing these processes which are in the background and uh, user doesn't noti notify this. So later when uh, he, he wants to switch to the application that was in the background. It is just launched from the start. Uh, okay, and uh, and this solution can also uh, use a compressed swap feature. So when the there is a low memory situation, instead of uh, killing processes, we try to compress them first and uh, only when there, there is uh, really no memory left, uh, they are killed. 
And this is all work in progress from, for future Tyson versions. And uh, I hope that it will evolve into a uh, user space only solution and that uh, kernel parts which are uh, there will be I either uh, upstreamed or replaced by some upstream solutions. Okay. And uh, now uh, a bit about uh, kernel uh, features that provide uh, applications with an API that can uh, allow applications to use memory more eff effectively. So one of the such features is uh, volatile memory ranges. Uh, it was inspired by Ashman device implementation for Android. And uh, it provides a way for user space application to give hints to the kernel about memory that is uh, not immediately in use and which can be regenerated. And a real life example of such applications are uh, browsers and uh, their cache caches. So we are trying to use this feature for WebKit currently. And uh, application uh, informs the kernel that a range of pages in its other space can be discarded at any time when the kernel needs uh, memory. So it's done by marking pages as volatile. And uh, when application later needs these pages again, it just uh, unmarks these pages, or in other words, it mar marks them as uh, non-volatile. And if the kernel already has uh, freed this memory, when application requests it to be made uh, non-volatile, the kernel will return a warning value to user space, uh, informing it that uh, the data was lost and it must be regenerated. Uh, if uh, okay, if application accesses such, memo such memory that was uh, uh, gone, it will get a SIGBUS signal, and uh, uh, SIGBUS uh, signal handler can mark memory as non volatile and regenerate the content. But uh, instead of doing this, the application can, can just check this uh, value return. At, uh, to, to it and uh, and uh, not access this memory and, and don't get a signal. So then there are two ways to doing it. And this uh, feature adds a new uh, syscall. It's called vrange, vrange and it can be used for both anonymous and file pages. And the function has uh, four arguments. Uh, address is a starting address of the memory area. Length is length of the range to be marked. Uh, mode can be either vo vrange volatile or vrange not, vo not volatile. And uh, part is this uh, pointer to any integer that will be set to one if uh, any data in the range be being marked uh, not volatile has been uh, reclaimed and uh, is lost. And it will be zero if the data specified in the range, uh, if, the, if the data specified in the range is okay. So the feature was uh, first proposed uh, a long time ago because in November 2011, as an extension uh, to POSIX FATVICE interface. Uh, it was also proposed as an extension to fallocate system call or madvice system call, but eventually uh, the memory, memory developers decided that it would be best to do a new syscall. And currently this set of patches is at uh, revision eight and uh, maybe they, they will be upstreamed in the future because uh, there are other positive reactions to it. Okay, and uh, sim similar interface is uh, a kernel sandpage merging. It uh, allows uh, dynamically sharing identical memory pages between one or more processes. Uh, memory is periodically scanned by uh, kernel daemon which, it, which uh, uh, identifies and merges identical pages. 
and uh, main user of this uh, feature currently are systems uh, doing a lot of uh, virtualization stuff and uh, for example it's supported by KVM so uh, these uh, virtualized guests have a lot of uh, the same memory but this memory mm, is not shared in process uh, tree relationship between between processes so normally when you can when you have a process and uh, you do a fork from from it the memory uh, of the child and parent processes are shared and uh, in this situation when you have this virtualized guest this memory cannot be shared because uh, the, there are parts of uh, of uh, OS images for example and some parts are uh, identical but you can't can't know it at this uh, kernel level you must uh, inform the kernel explicitly that uh, that uh, there is possibility that in this uh, area in this memory areas uh, the data are the same and uh, and uh, since uh, memory scanning uses a lot of processing power it's quite important to limit it to areas that are likely to benefit from sharing so we are not doing this uh, scanning of memory for all available memory we are just uh, uh, adju adjusting the applications to uh, point kernel to this uh, memory areas that are likely to be identical so for this we have a, a MADV mergeable uh, parameter for MADVICE system call to mark uh, pages as likely candidates for merging and there is a, a MADV unmergeable uh, parameter to unmark them and uh, unshare them and uh, it's important uh, to not notice that uh, unsharing pages may require more, more memory that is currently available because when pages were shared uh, the copies were uh, removed from the system and uh, now is less memory now is less free memory than it was before so when you do this merging it's possible to uh, receive uh, out of memory uh, to wake up out of memory killer and uh, receive a sick kill signal from from the kernel so uh, a bit of care is needed in using this system calls and, uh, and there are some references to documentation uh, C groups documentation is quite good. There are good examples on how to set up C groups and manage them. Uh, the same with uh, memory controller uh, and uh, KC. Okay, and um, maybe it's time for some questions. Okay. Uh, no, not yet. We, we've just uh, started to try to use it for WebKit and uh, it's, it's work in progress still. Okay. Mm, do you mean uh, using uh, some uh, hardware accelerated compression? Uh, it, it could be beneficial, but uh, there is no software support. Okay. Do you have some uh, specific har hardware uh, in mind?
Okay. Okay, and uh, it could be beneficial uh, not only because it could be faster, but uh, it can uh, draw uh, less uh, power. It's possible. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's that's a good idea. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. For example, you don't always uh, want to do a reclaim. Uh, there are situations, for example, you have a video player running on mobile device, and uh, you would like it to uh, use the larger amount of uh, file caches, and uh, you wouldn't like to do reclaim on, on, this on this application, and you would prefer to do reclaim on some, some other ones. So. Uh, it's not only uh, about doing reclaim, but also about the uh, order of, of of doing it. So I don't know if it answers your question, but uh, there are situations when 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 it's uh, useful. Okay, so uh, you mean that uh, applications can get some notifications? Yes, yes uh, but it requires uh, some adjustment to uh, application. Uh, it requires you to change the application to receive uh, these notifications. And you can do per process reclaim without any changes to existing software. Okay, okay so. So thank you.